Right, I'm Matt Spangler, Beef Genetics Specialist at the University of Nebraska, and today we're going to demonstrate to you a few different methods of collecting DNA samples. Now, there's several reasons why a beef producer might need to collect a DNA sample. For instance, if they're a seed stock producer, they may need to verify parentage of a particular animal, or now with the advent of several new uh, genetic defects that have been discovered, producers may need to get a DNA sample to determine if an animal is a carrier of a particular genetic defect or not. And then, of course, there are several diagnostic tests for traits such as growth or carcass merit, which may also require, require a DNA sample. There are a few different methods of collecting a DNA sample. One is semen. You can use semen on any bull. Blood, and we're going to demonstrate a couple of different methods of collecting blood. There's also hair samples from the switch of an animal, and then also taking an ear notch to provide a tissue sample. Now, the type of sample depends on the type of test and the company that you're working with, so I certainly encourage you to contact those companies and ask for their preferred method of samples uh, for a particular test that you're interested in. Outside of that, there are other reasons why you might choose one sample type over another. For instance, on very young calves, hair samples generally aren't good simply because the hair follicles aren't fully formed yet. So if for some reason you need to collect a sample on a calf that's younger than weaning age, you might elect to do a blood sample or perhaps the easiest thing would be to take a tissue sample in the form of an ear notch at that point. From here we're going to show you a few different ways of taking hair samples, blood samples, and then also a tissue sample from the ear. Okay, what Luke Kavoric, a graduate student here, is going to do now is demonstrate how to take a hair sample from the switch. And, and what we're trying to do is to get at least 20 to 25 follicles of hair, and he's going to pull that out now. So now we'll make sure to place the actual hair follicles onto this collector. We'll seal the collector so that the hair follicles are actually contained within this card. And then the excess hair we can actually just cut off with a pair of scissors. You'll see the hair follicles are contained inside here. And the hair follicles are actually where they'll extract the DNA from. Now on the front side of the card, you'd want to make sure and write down the animal's identification number, just simply their ear tag number. And then when that gets sent to a lab, the ear tag number along with the barcode will actually be put together to be able to track the sample. What Luke is going to demonstrate now is how to pull blood from the tail of an animal. And what he's going to do is, is lift up the tail, try to find the vein underneath the tail and stick the syringe in and extract a little bit of blood. Uh, for this method, not very much is needed. Uh, certainly one milliliter is enough and, and Luke's pulled out more, which is certainly fine. All right, so I'll take the blood from the syringe and try to slowly uh, drip it onto this card into the circle. And the goal is to fill up the circle but not flood the card with blood. So as you can see, I've certainly filled the circle and more, and that's fine. I just want to make sure that I have enough blood on there uh, so they can get a clean sample from it, uh, but not so much that it floods the card and then causes this card, the top of it, to actually stick to the sample. If that happens, sometimes this can mold and mildew before it ever gets to a lab. Now while the sample is drying, I'll, I'll seal the card like this so that air can still get in and the sample can dry but it's protected somewhat from dirt and debris and particularly protected from another blood sample actually coming in contact with this. Now once it's dry I can take it and seal it up even further and then send it to a lab to be processed. As with any DNA sample it's critical that this card and the sample be free of dirt and debris and manure. On the front side of the card, just like with the hair sample, I'll need to fill out some pertinent information, in particular the animal ID, either my name or my business's name, and then the date that this sample was collected. As I mentioned before, some labs require DNA samples to be sent in in different ways, so we're going to demonstrate a second way of taking a blood sample from the tail. So instead of taking the blood and putting it onto a collection card, we'll actually collect the blood uh, using this vacutainer and then putting it into this tube. 
uh, and that way, uh, if a lab requires that blood be sent in in this manner, uh, you'd know how to collect it. With any other DNA collection uh, method, it's important with this too to make sure to have a label on the tube clearly depicting who the animal is uh, and your business name. The final method of DNA collection that we showed you is taking a notch from the ear. Now that's used, uh, done using a, a pig notcher, or a, a notcher that would be used to uh, ear notch pigs for identification purposes, and it works well to take this type of sample from the thin part of the animal's ear. Now it's just a very small sample that we then, uh, for demonstration purposes, put into a tube, uh, and then a producer could store that sample if they needed to uh, before they sent it to a lab. And it, to store that sample, it'd be important to freeze it, just simply putting it in your deep freezer, as long as you clearly have it identified uh, with that animal's ear tag. Uh, that way the sample won't degrade before you send it off to a lab. In closing, the three types of DNA samples that we showed today were taking a hair sample from the switch of the tail, and then two different methods of taking blood, uh, both from the tail, but one putting it onto a collection card, and then the other method was actually storing it into a tube. And then, of course, the final method was taking a tissue sample in the form of the notch uh, from the animal's ear. Now, when taking DNA samples, it's critical that you communicate with the particular lab that you're going to work with, let them know what kind of test you want run, and then they can advise you on what best uh, sample to send them. It's also critical that you have these samples clearly identified with the animal's ear tag number, and then also it's important to make sure that the samples are clean and free of debris such as manure, dirt, or another animal's tissue or blood. When taking blood samples, it's important to use a different needle and different syringe for every animal that you do.